TBR in my car. TBR in my car. <laughs> oh. Hey everyone. Oh, sorry Emma. Uh, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name's Kylie and today I'm doing a TBR in my car. I like rhyming. Okay, let's turn to my October TBR in my notebook. I'm having a problem because I got so proud of myself for everything I read for my August when I was doing that newt readathon. Um, that I was like, yeah, I can do that every month. Easy. 3,000 pages. Two, three hours of audiobook per day. I can be the ultimate booktuber and read 15 books every single month. It's not happening, okay? I'm having a crisis right now, personally. It is... What's today? It's Monday. It's the last week of September. I think September ends on Saturday. So there's just a week left. And I have to get through this monster... Stranger Dreamer for the last week, and, um, like, that's, I planned it out, and that's, like, a good, like, 80, 90 pages a day, because it's, like, over 500 pages, and then I also, I started reading Everland, um, but I also have Wonder Woman at home, I read 20 pages of it, and since I loved Cinder so much, I already got Scarlet out from the library. And, like, I can't read that much in one week. And I have a, I have overplanned my October TBR. Like, I just don't know what I'm going to do. So, <laughs> I think my TBRs from now on are just going to be, like, I might read this stuff this month. So, we're going to start with October. Um, the ones that I'm for sure going to read... I'll talk about the ones that there are read-alongs for or or buddy reads. Okay, so I'm for sure going to do my buddy reads. And I have a buddy read with um, Zoe from Reader B and with... Um, I have her on Twitter. I talked to her on Twitter, Layla C, I think, on Twitter. I'm not sure what her channel name is, but I'm going to link it down below. And we're going we're gonna to jump on this um, Akotar train. And we're going to read this. Um, so that's for sure going to get read. I'm going to start on that. Okay. And then I'm going to do it on audiobook with, and we're doing a buddy read, me and Alex Black. And we're going to do The Seven Husbands of Eg Evelyn Hugo. And I'm going to jump on that train as well. Alex and I, I think we're starting that on the first, which is next Monday. Pretty sure. And then... Akatar, I think we're starting on October 5th. For sure, reading those two books, okay? Then, <laughs> um, it took me a really long time to get a Gathering of Shadows from my library. So, <laughs> I only got it... Did I pick it up on Wednesday or something? Like, the 19th, and the live show was the 22nd. So, I missed the live show because I was still, like, 140 pages from the end. So I really want to get hit this last live show because I missed both of the first two um, for these darker shade of read-alongs. Um, Common Spence is hosting. Um, and there's a whole Twitter thing and everything. So the next one's called A Conjuring of Light. And my library has like quite a few copies of those that are available. So as soon as I request it, it's just going to be a couple of days and they'll have it ready for me. So that's another one because a gathering of shadows ended in a cliffhanger, you guys. A freaking cliffhanger. So I need to get to that. All right. So those three, I think, are my for sures. And then my next one on my list is this one, Racing the Dark by Alea Don Johnson. Um... I don't know. 
a lot about what's it about. I don't remember. I think I um showed you this book in a haul before. But this is borrowed. I borrowed this from people that I don't really know <laughs> um, in August. So I want to get this back to them. I want to be a good bookish friend and get it back to them. So I want to make sure I read this in October and, and get it back to them as soon as I can. Um, so we're going to be trying that one. Um, let's see what else I got on my list here. So then... There's also a read-along, I don't have it, but for um, a da the Daughter of Smoke and Bone, a daughter, or just daughter, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, uh, by, is that, is that Lainey Taylor again, who wrote that one? Um, I don't know if I'm gonna, uh, 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 there's just too many, there's just too many books, because, okay, like, I, yeah, that series, like, okay, like, I want to get to that one, too. But I also, I bought Vicious, and the second one just came out, and I want to get this one read, and I also have a hold, and I know that it's going to become available for me in October, I have a hold in my library on The Extinction Trials by S.M. Wilson, and The Extinction Trials is supposed to be The Hunger Games with Dinosaurs. So, <gasps> that one, like... It's just too many, you guys. That's too many pages. Okay, and then so... F <laughs> so for the last half... For the last half of October... I wanted to do thrillers. Because I don't really read thrillers. Because I'm a scaredy cat. Um... So I bought... I ended up buying like quite a few... I think three or four true crime books... At that big book haul that I... Or that big book sale that I went to. All the books were in my haul... And I've, I've owned um, Dark Matter since the spring. I bought it um, a while ago. And so I for sure wanted to read Dark Matter, which is a psychological thriller. And then I have, I have these three with me. These are, oh, ah! These are all books I own. So we have Someone Cry for the Children. And this one's about um, a girl, it says... Girl Scout Murders of Oklahoma. Okay. And then... This one's about the kids next door. It says, sons and daughters who killed their parents. Because, like, I'm not already scared enough of my child, my own children. And they just start screaming for no reason. And then Ruth Ware is, like... She's, um... She writes lots of thrillers that are popular, I think. And I... I there's praise on the back for <clears throat> other ones that she's written in a dark, dark wood, the lying game, the woman in cabin 10, but this one's called the death of Mrs. Westway. And it was in the little library, I think by my house. So those are my four thrillers that I have. I have more at my house. Um, I think I have another one called, Oh, I don't know. It ha it's something Florence something yeah um so I don't know which ones I'm gonna actually read I kind of really want to read dark matter if anyone wants a buddy read with that with me at the end of the month of October I would do that <clears throat> um and then for audiobooks I'm gonna do Evelyn Hugo first for the first week of uh of October I think I really wanted to try to nail that down in five days but we'll see and then I have written down Sky in the Deep, The Last Namsara, and then I Let You Go. I Let You Go is a thriller. So we'll just see how it goes. But as far as priorities, for sure Akotar, for sure The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, for sure A Conjuring of Light, okay, and for sure Dark Matter. So that's four for sure's. But I think I could easily read, um, I can easily read, like, seven, probably, paper books, six or seven paper books, and three audiobooks a month. The audiobooks, I'm going to have trouble, though, because Scribed, sc I'm learning things about Scribed that I don't like, so I saw a Twitter thread recently 
that brought this to light. Um, and it was something I didn't realize. Okay, so something I was noticing was I was, like, searching for popular titles. Um, you know, like, because I was trying to decide on TBRs and I was searching to see what Described have available, what's on Scribed and what isn't. So I was searching, um, and I would find ones and lots of times it would say, um, available, you know, like August 27th or something like that. And what I thought that it was, was that Scribed is just like slow at getting new titles. And so that these popular books, they're only just gonna be getting them like soon. But that's not true because after I came upon, upon this Twitter thread about Scribed, basically telling you that it's not unlimited, they definitely limit the amount of popular and like new titles that you can listen to in a month. Um, and then they have like, a section of their library that's, like, a lot of nonfiction, a lot of <clears throat> classics and, like, older stuff that probably, like, you know, the average person isn't super interested in reading. So you always have access to that stuff, the stuff that you don't really necessarily want. Um, but there, there's obviously some sort of a limit because what happened was I had picked out for September the ones that I wanted to listen to. And after I listened to, what have I listened to so far? I listened to Sea Witch. And I also had downloaded Christina Henry's, uh, and I'm listening to, is it called Lost Boy? And it's the story of Captain Hook. Um, okay, and then I had Wicked, Wicked or The Wicked, which is like a the Wicked Witch from the Dorothy, uh, uh, the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch from the Wizard of Oz. I think it's supposed to be an origin story. Anyways, um, so I had those three. I didn't have them all downloaded, but I had them saved and I had some of them downloaded. Um, I had the first two downloaded, but I didn't have Wicked downloaded. But Wicked, when I was searching, when I was looking for it, Wicked didn't say, like, available on such and such a date. It was just available. But after I checked that Twitter thread, then I went on my scribed and looked, and Wicked said, like, available September 27th. Even though previously when I looked at it, it was, it was available, like, I could have listened to it. So... I don't know, like, exactly, like, what you're limited to, if you're limited to certain publishers, if you're limited, like, on popular books, and I don't know what the limit is. I don't know if it has to do with lim uh, listening, like, time, or just titles, like, number of titles, and I don't know if it has anything to do with, um, like, for example, I just had all my ones that I had listened to before that I had downloaded, I didn't, like, get rid of them. I didn't unsave them or delete them from my device. I just left them there. So I'm wondering if, like, that has an effect. Like, if I should, once I'm done with a book, like, unsave it, get it off my device right away, and that will help me um, have more availability in the titles that I watch. So I don't know if anyone, you know... If anyone understands it a little bit better and can give me some more insight on that, that would be really helpful. But, yeah, so I don't... I think, like, I'm not going to be able to read um, as much on audiobook as I thought because I was really planning, like, a lot of the popular books. I was basically deciding which ones to read on audiobook and which ones to read in paper book based on what Scribe had Scribed has in their library. And then I went on my my, um, my library, like, by the public libraries, um, database that they have for audiobooks, and I didn't find any of the ones that I wanted to listen to on October, because I thought maybe I could balance it, like, listen to some from the regular library and some from Scribed, but, yeah. Okay, so this is getting a long video, and I'm gonna have to edit it down, but basically, that's kind of my plan. I'm going to read some thrillers. I'm going to vlog it. I don't know if it'll be interesting or not. 
if I'm that much of a scaredy cat or maybe like I've grown up <laughs> and maybe I'm not going to be scared of the thrillers. Um, actually, I think it'll be okay as long as I'm not like home alone. So, but yeah, we'll see what I end up getting through. It's so hard. It's so hard to pick the books that you want to read. Now I'm just crying around. Okay, I'm going to go. If you have any sort of opinion on what I for sure should or, sh or should read or what you think I should skip for October, let me know down in the comments. If you want to buddy read any of the titles that I've said out loud with me, that could help me prioritize that book for this month. Um, let me know in the comments or on Twitter, DM me, whatever you want to do. And like and subscribe to see more from me. And that's all I have for you today. Bye!